The eye spindle kit is a pretty straightforward kit to put together and if you've done electronics works before, you probably already have all the tools that you need in your kit. The first of those being a soldering iron and some solder. Now, all of the parts that come in the kit are through hole components and they're pretty straightforward to put in. The second item you're going to need is some wire snips and I like the ones with the short nose and that are angled so that you can cut close to the PCB. And we're going to use these to cut down pins and trim the resistors and the diodes. And now if you only had those two pieces of equipment, you could actually put the whole kit together, it's that simple, but there's a couple of other things that may just make it a little bit easier along the way. The first of those is a breadboard. Now I don't actually use this too much when I'm putting the kit together, but it can be handy to hold pins while you're soldering them to the PCB. Next up is something that's small in size but large in weight. Now, I like to use this solder roll, I've just got it laying around, but it can be anything really. This is just to hold down the PCB and hold things in place while we're soldering pins together. And lastly, something similar to this washer. Now, this washer is actually a similar size to the plastic on the standoffs of the pins that we're soldering to the board. And this is going to help us level the gyro and keep it nice and flat when we're soldering it to those pins. We're gonna calibrate everything anyway, but we wanna start from as flat a possible position, and I'm gonna show you that later on. All right, so I've got everything I need to complete the build in front of me and we're going to start with the PCB. Now the PCB I'm using here is the Cherry Phillips Ice Spindle 4.0 board. Now I know that all of these parts work with this board, but if you're using a different PCB, make sure that the rest of the components are actually compatible with that board because it can change. Next up is the Wemos D1 Mini. Now this is the microcontroller that's going to take the sensor data that we put into it and spit it out over Wi-Fi to the services that we choose. So this really is doing all the hard work in the ice spindle. Thirdly, we have our gyroscope. This is the MPU 6050. Now this is going to tell us the angle that the ice spindle is sitting at and therefore our specific gravity. So this is a really sensitive instrument and really critical to have working properly. Speaking of sensors, this is the DS18B20, which is our temperature sensor. So it's going to measure the ambient temperature within the ice spindle and therefore what our fermentation temperature is. Next up are some power things. So we have the TP4056 battery charger. This has a micro USB port on the top of it and we're going to use this to charge the internal battery of the ice spindle. We've also got a two position power switch as well as two pins that we're going to use to reset if we need to. Onto our resistors and our diodes. So this kit uses two resistors and one diode. The diode is a BAT43 and the resistors here are a 4,700 ohm resistor and a 220 kilo ohm resistor. Now, this PCB actually specifies a 230 kilo ohm resistor, but that's not a part that you can get off the shelf and a 220 kilo ohm resistor works just fine. So now we come to powering the ice spindle and there's a couple of pretty specific parts that we need to use for this kit and it depends on what PCB you're using and what parts you need. So first up is the battery holder. Now this is a Keystone 1043P18650 battery holder PCB mount. It's a mouthful to say, but basically this is a PCB mount 18650 battery holder. It's got some locating lugs on the back that also line up with some locating holes on the PCB as well as a couple of pins to put in. Now, this has polarity, so be very careful of which way you put it in. And next up is the battery. Now, the battery actually plays an important role in the weight and how the ice spindle floats. So you have to be really careful about what battery you choose for the kit. Now, this PCB actually specifies a 44 gram battery, but you should be able to get away with something between 42 and 46 grams. These batteries are the Panasonic NCR18650B and it weighs in at 46 grams and I've found with everything put together it floats within specs of the ice spindle. Now the ice spindle in pure water has to float at 25 degrees plus or minus 5 degrees and I've found with all of these components put together it floats at around 24 to 24 and a half which is well within tolerances and it's all good to go. And lastly we have the XL preform bottle. Now this can actually be the trickiest thing to find. They have to come from Lithuania and there's only a couple of people who are selling them so this can actually be the hardest part to find and if you can find a whole kit together it may actually end up cheaper and easier in the long run than buying everything separately so that's everything you're going to need let's start building it All right, so first up we have our two position power switch as well as the pins for the battery charger. Now the power switch goes on underneath the battery charger, so I'm gonna put that in first. If you look at the PCB where it says USB is where the switch is going to go, there's a little outline for it. So all I'm going to do, stick the switch inside the holes there, flip it upside down and lean it on something. I'm using the breadboard here. Put something weighted on the PCB to hold everything together. 
and we're going to solder the pins in. Alright, so the first pins that I'm going to put in are the single pins and they go right next to the power switch. Now these ones can be a little bit tricky because they are single pins, they like to wobble around. So just make sure when you're putting them in, they're going in straight. I'm going to use the breadboard for this just to make life a little bit easier. And if it helps you out, there's about five pin space in between the two pins. And then they should, should being the key word here, line up together. You can just prop up the back with something. I'm just going to use these for now. Put some weight on it and we can solder the pins in. Next up are the pins for the battery charger and the ones on the bottom of the battery charger actually just sit in place nice and easily on the board. So I'm just going to stick those in there. And there's one pin on the back which I'm going to trim which is going to sit underneath the Wemos. It's this one right here, so before we solder that, I'm just gonna trim the end off that one so it sits nice and flush underneath. Then I'm gonna use my cutting board just to sit it upside down with something propping up the back, just using the breadboard here. Again, weighing it down, and I'm gonna solder the pins in. All right, they're all looking really good there, and that one that we trimmed is looking really nice and flush to the board. That's just gonna help any clearance with the Wemos board that we may need. All right, everything's looking good there. We're gonna put the battery charger in now, but the first thing we need to do is actually stretch out these pins a little bit. The spacing on the battery charger is a little bit different to what the pins are, but we're just gonna stick something in there, widen them out a little bit, and now our battery charger is ready to go on. So the battery charger again, it'll just sit straight over the top, and we've got that on. Now, I like to leave a little bit of a gap between the power switch and the USB port there, just to make sure everything's clearing each other. Now, with the pins sticking out like that, you could just solder as is, and it'd be a really great join, but I like to make mine look a little bit nicer, just make everything look a bit cleaner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim one pin on one corner and the far corner. I'm gonna solder them flat so it sits nice and flush with the PCB. After that's holding everything in place, I'm gonna trim the rest of the pins and solder all them together. Alright, everything's looking really good there for the battery charger, it's all in really nice and well. Like I said, you don't have to trim the pins down to solder them, I just like the look of this and it looks really nice and neat. So that's our first component installed. Next thing we need to do, we need to put the reset pins in and then we're on to putting the Wemos in. So reset pins, same again, just going to put them straight through the hole, put something up against the other side of it, just to level it out, weigh it down in the middle and join it together. All right, everything there's looking really good. Time to move on now to the Wemos board. All right, so I've got the Wemos board in front of me now, and the Wemos board comes with a couple of different types of pins, but the ones that we're going to use are these eight pin straight headers, and we're gonna need two of them, but we're just gonna do one side at a time. So I'm just gonna flip the board around. You can see the Wemos D1 Mini is labeled. I'm gonna place in just one side of the pins first. Again, similar to before, I'm just gonna put them against my cutting board and prep up the back of it with something else like the breadboard. I'm gonna put the weight in the middle and I'm not gonna solder everything together yet. Once you've soldered that one pin in, just flip the board around and have a look. Make sure the pins are sitting in nice and straight. These ones are looking good, all right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through, solder the rest of the pins in, same for the other side, and then we'll be ready to put the Wemos in. All right, the pins are sitting in there nice and flat. They're looking really good, so time to put the Wemos in. Uh, when you look at the Wemos, you can see the antenna here. So the antenna is gonna face us and go to the top of the ice spindle. If you look on the board, it's actually labeled as well. So we're just gonna sit that on the pins there. And if you look underneath, you can actually see why we trimmed that one pin before. There's just a little component there that may fail if you have a high solder point. So what I'm gonna do here, similar to the battery charger, I'm gonna trim one from either corner, solder them in to hold everything in place, trim the rest of the pins and solder them all together. All right, so again, in this kit, there's a 220 kilo ohm resistor, a 4,700 ohm resistor, and a BAT43 diode. So I'm gonna start with the bigger of the two resistors, which is the 220 kilo ohm resistor. Now the resistors don't have polarity, so they can go in either way, but the diode does, so we just have to be careful to put that one in the correct way. So to start off, I'm gonna bend the legs nice and close to the body of the resistor. 
And then looking at the PCB, you can see the picture on the PCB of where the resistor goes. I'm just gonna put the legs through the PCB. And then once that's sitting nice and flush with the PCB, I'm going to bend the legs back on the back of the PCB just to hold everything in place. I'm gonna cut one of the legs off. Then I'm gonna solder that in to hold it in. Then do the same for the other side and we're on to the next resistor. 4,700 ohm resistor next, exactly the same process. All right, the resistors are in, sitting nice and flush with the PCB. Next up is the diode, and again, the diode does have polarity. So if you look at the PCB, you can see the diagram has a little black ring around one side. Look at the diode, you can see the black ring as well. So once we've figured out which way it goes in, same as the resistors, we're gonna put it in. All right, and with the diode in, that is the top half of the eye spindle complete. Next up's the gyro, and the gyro actually comes with the same eight pin straight headers, but we actually only need four of the pins. So first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna take the wire snips, cut that in half so we've got a four pin. Once we've trimmed the pins down to four pins, I'm just gonna have a look. You can see the diagram on the PCB of where the pins are gonna go. So I'm just gonna sit those in there and flip the board over. Now, where the pins are gonna be soldered in actually is underneath the battery holder, so we actually want that as flat as possible. So we're gonna to need to trim the back of these pins down. Similar to before, I'm just gonna trim one down first, solder that in place, flip it over, have a little look at it, make sure everything's laying flat before we trim the rest of them, solder them, make sure everything's sitting nice and flush, and then we can mount the gyro. All right, the pins are sitting in there. The joins are nice and flat underneath where the battery holder is going to go. So now we can mount the gyro. So similar to before, I'm just going to prop up the back of the board with my breadboard again. And this is where the washer can come in handy. I'm going to actually sit that underneath next to where the standoffs on the pins are and then mount the gyro. Like I said before, we are going to calibrate this anyway, but we want to start from as flat a possible position as we can so that we make sure the results are really accurate in the end. Um, so similar to before, again, once that's sitting there, I'm going to trim one pin and just make sure it's lining up with where the diagram is on the PCB. I'm going to solder one pin in. And just once you've soldered that pin, I'm just gonna remove the washer and have a look at it and make sure it's sitting nice and level with the PCB. You really want that to be a nice starting point and this one's looking really good. So once that's in a good position, I'm gonna trim the rest of the pins, solder them together and then the gyro is mounted. All right, the gyro is mounted and that is the first of our sensors done. And speaking of sensors, we're going to do our temperature sensor next. If you look at it from the top, it's a semicircle in shape and you can see on the diagram how the semicircle goes. So it's pretty obvious. I'm just gonna stretch out the legs a little bit on that to make it easier to fit through the PCB. And once that goes through, I'm just gonna push it down just so it sits just above the gyro. And once it's in a position I like, similar to the resistors, I'm gonna bend the two outside pins to hold it in place going to cut this middle pin here and I'm going to solder that on. After that's done and holding everything in place, same as the resistors, trim the other two legs and solder them in and our sensors are done. All right, we're nearing the end. We're almost there. Last thing to do for the board is put the battery holder on. Now you can see that there's polarity written on the PCB as well as inside of the battery holder and just make sure that the dimples on the top and the tabs on the bottom. So all we're going to do, line it up with the holes and I'm gonna start with the top hole, making sure that the PCB tab is poking through and the holes lined up with the stud. I'm just gonna click it through, line up the bottom one, make sure the PCB tab's going through the hole, make sure the stud's lined up. I'm gonna click that through. All right, that's sitting in there nicely. Just two pins here to solder up and then we're done. All right, with those two pins soldered in, that's all of the electronics in for the eye spindle. The last thing to do, I sometimes find that this bottom tab doesn't make great contact with the battery, so all I'm going to do is just stretch that bottom tab out just a tiny little bit to make sure the battery is really contacting well. All right, moment of truth. I'm just gonna stick the 18650 in, switch it on, and looks like we're good. All right. First thing we need to do now is flash the Wemos board with the eye spindle firmware, but first we're going to remove the battery. You should never have the battery installed while you're flashing firmware or have a USB plugged into the Wemos board, only when charging through the very top USB port. All right, let's flash. 
All right, so the ice spindle is all built, and the last thing to do is to flash the custom ice spindle firmware onto the Wemos board. Now, you want to again make sure that the battery is removed when you're doing this. You never want to have the battery in while you're doing firmware on the Wemos. So the first thing to do, we're going to navigate to the official ice spindle website, which is icespindle.de. Once we're there, we're just going to scroll down and click on firmware download here. That'll take us to the GitHub page and we can download the latest firmware. So I'm just going to select the firmware.bin right here and that'll download straight to my files. Now that we've got the firmware, I'm also going to download the firmware flashing tool. So I'm going to navigate over to the English documentation page, scroll down to the software section, click on firmware flashing, and then there'll be a link there to the Node MCU flasher tool. Once the Node MCU flashing tool is downloaded, we can go ahead and launch that. And we'll be greeted with this screen right here. Now the first thing we need to do is actually point it to the correct firmware file. So what we're going to do is go over to the config tab, click here on the little gear icon, select where we just downloaded the firmware and click open. Once we do that, we'll go back to the operation tab and we're going to plug in the ice spindle. Now we actually want to plug into the Wemos board, not to the battery charger. So make sure you're going into the board here. So we'll just plug it into USB and you should see the COM port change. Mine's just changed from COM1 to COM4 there. So once that's there, we're just going to click flash and we're going to wait for it to finish. Awesome, so the ice spindle software has just finished flashing. What I'm going to do is remove the USB cable from the Wemos. I'm going to plug in the 18650 battery, switch on the ice spindle, and now if we look in Wi Fi, we should find an ice spindle Wi Fi access point. All right, so the ice spindle hotspot's just shown up. If it prompts you that there's no internet connection on the Wi Fi, don't worry about that, just click continue. So I'm going to connect to that. So the next thing to do is to go to the ice spindle configuration page and that can be found at 192.168.4.1. Should be able to see the ice spindle info, configuration, etc. So I'm just going to go into ice spindle info and there we have it. You can see the temperature, the tilt that it's at at the moment. So when I twist it around, it's showing me different tilt values and it looks like everything's working really well. On the gyro there is a small LED that you can remove if you like, however I generally just give it a dab of a paint marker. It cuts down most of the light but still lets you know that the ice spindle is powered on. And that's it. The last thing to do is to grab the preform bottle and put the ice spindle inside. Now if it doesn't quite fit you may have to shave down the sides of the PCB a little bit to get it to fit but this one fits really really well. It's nice and snug. And that's it for building your very first eye spindle and flashing the firmware on it. Now, before you use it in a fermentation, you are going to have to fully calibrate it. I've got some videos coming out on that, so make sure you check them out.